Maths. Oh. We'll try that again. Maths. Yay! Not. Your school days. Stop. Heal. Love them. <laughs> or loathe them. I will be your teacher all the way through to GCSE. Oh, so next year, kill me now. You never forget them. <laughs> At Willows High in Cardiff, for an uncompromising head teacher. Girls, I don't know what's slowing you down, but it is starting to annoy me. There's a job to be done. It means everything to me that all you guys get is one thing, and that is a choice. To turn around a school that was until recently one of the worst in Wales. I think an education should give every child a chance. I don't think it's fair that actually your postcode can determine your life chances. But when you're dealing with teenagers... She's the God Assembly! Life's never straightforward. We're Switzerland. New Zealand. There was somewhere like that, though, wasn't there? We filmed over a year to find out what life is really like in one of our secondary schools. For the teachers... <laughs> so everyone in the department is ganging up on your son. And the kids at the very start of adult life. Come in and damage any more school problems. How am I damaging staff? I want the right staff in my school, people that genuinely want to champion the underdog. Oh, these girls. They give everything to the children of their school. Give me a high five. Excellent. When a child makes it against all the odds, it's the most rewarding thing of all. How can we get called sheep shaggers? There are like five million other questions you could have asked me. Why did you come up with that one? <laughs> Let's just clarify one fact in life. Don't think just because you live in Wales, the sun doesn't come up. <laughs> Cos I actually had a Year 11 once that said the sun hasn't come up today because I can't see it. <laughs> so it's important to clear this up in Year 7. The sun rises every single day. That's the only reason night becomes day. If you go and live in Australia or some other hot countries, you see it every day. In Wales, we don't always see it. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Just the man I want. What's missing? Yeah, where's your tie? I'm going to have to get one of ripped off. Come on, get a tie, please. Head teacher Mrs Ballard is in her third year at Willows High School. Come on, you little! On the way, son? Yes, you're lovely! I'd actually never been to Wales before, only to Barry Island on the Gavin and Stacey tour. I was a bit of a fan. Hello, darling. Hi. I haven't become fluent in Welsh. I've tried. Bender Gedding. No, I, I don't think I was ever able to say that before, and now I can say it. You haven't got a giant bottle of Coke in your hand, have you? <laughs> right. You better have that put away. When Mrs. Ballard took over, it was one of the worst performing schools in Wales. When I first came into the school. I came in the wrong way through the back gate and somebody had written up there in big black letters, it's the other way to the shell. <laughs> I don't know if that was one of the kids, one of the parents, or indeed one of the staff. Oh, yeah, your ties are all right. Oh, <laughs> Since I've been the head teacher of this school, I've been determined to drive up the standards. Oh, you are the best boy in this school. I'm looking good as well. <laughs> I want the pupils of this school, by the time they finish Year 11, to be fully rounded human beings and to be able to dream and to achieve whatever they want to do. And that means in a school like this, from the minute they start in Year 7 to when they finish in Year 11, not for one minute can we take our eye off the ball. Good morning, Year 11s. Guys, it is a tough world out there. When you finish school, it's so competitive. And if at this stage you're not attending regularly, you're not getting to school on time, we will be honest about that when you're applying on to places. Willow's Year 11s have just six months before they sit their GCSEs and finish school. If anybody's not starting to turn it around now and give it all, their chance is going to be gone. 
If you're one of the people that's still acting like you're in year eight, woe betide you. Oh, my God. With these, there's a lot more electrons that could get in the way. OK? If the electrons get in the way... It's 9.30, halfway through period one. Year 11's Leah and Courtney are late for science. When I wake up, I have to sit there for, like, 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> to actually wake up. Um, well, I just don't wake up. <laughs> it's just You no have to jump up. on here to wake it up. Yeah. Then you've got to do the same for sodium and potassium. Good afternoon, Leah. Where have you been? It's not good, is it? Leah and Courtney have two of the worst attendance records in the school. One of you be kind and let her copy what you've written. For the last three weeks, they've been late or absent on average every other day. Sorry, but it fucking stinks in here. You'll be off task. We don't really come to school thinking it's going to be school. Are we allowed to talk? No. Why? Come in late for start. It's just like a day out, but it's all. And I had a word. I was like, a word? Nobody would hold my hands. <laughs> because like, I had a word, like, and they thought it was contagious. Girls. There's no point in being in this lesson, to be honest with you. Right, Courtney, get out. I'm sick of you already. Go. <laughs> Do you have a teacher that you dread catching when you're late? Mr. Hannessy. Back to the buzzers, five times five. 25, back in. Shh. I will keep you here for lunch. But we're not going to lunch until we finish this question. Simple. Mr Hennessy has taught maths at Willows for the last six years. What made you get into teaching in the first place? Oh, God. Uh, long holidays. I don't know what the hell you're doing. Take a seat. Oh, mate! Arrived for one day supply in 2009, then a week, then a month, then a term. Then a year, then another year. Those who've been no problem will be out the door in, like, 30 seconds. I'll be here longer. Go away. Who are the most strict teachers? There's only one. It would be Mr Hennessy. Mr Hennessy. Mr Hennessy. Two lads here and kicked out of class. Well, I'm going to ask him once. Are you going to park in, gents? Because I'm going to make sure you're in there after lunch as well. I mean, it's a nice... Back. He's nice, but he could be horrible. Stop. Heal. Because the hell is even miserable? Isolation. Do you think it's important for students to like you? To like me? <laughs> um... Emily! Get away, get away. Emily! <laughs> Always the most popular one. In a one-word answer, no. Bloody... Oh, it's the third time up these bloody stairs. <sighs> As a head of house, Mr Hennessy oversees the progress of 120 students at the school. And one of them is taking up the majority of his time. <sighs> Could I speak to Leah, please? Yeah, yeah. He's concerned Leah's poor attendance is making her fall behind. Challenges for Leah this term are to keep her in school all the time, make sure she's attending core subjects, and get as many qualifications as we can. Thursday, you were late. Thursday and Friday, I was out. You sure? Yeah. Do you know how many days off I've had this year? None. None. I still choose when to be ill. Along with her mother, we've decided that I will ring her on a daily basis to make sure she's coming in on time. Normally about 8 o'clock every morning, give her a quick ring. Sometimes she answers, sometimes she doesn't. It's like a game. Well, you won't answer, I'm going to keep ringing until you answer. Just stop these patterns of the odd day in there. And the most frustrating thing is, she is very bright. She could be leaving with a very good set of results, but you need to put some effort here and now. Come on, let's get educated. Let's go. OK, three, two, shh. One, shh. It's Wednesday morning. Right there. Leah's in science. That back table, look this way, shut up a minute. Shh. 
Right, wanna go through this? <laughs> Leah, <laughs> Leah, <laughs> this way a minute. There are some people in my class that are a little bit like silly, and I'm just kind of looking at them in the corner of my eye, going, "Why don't you just shut up? Just let us learn, for God's sake." <laughs> Some people do want to learn, you know, they, they want to do well in life. A grade student Jessica is also in year 11 with a 100% attendance record. Right, Leah, shut up a minute. Because they're the more popular people, you can't really say anything to them because you'll get a whole gang of people on your, like, on your back then. You'd be like, ew. <sighs> Because you've got the kind of cool kids, you've got kind of a girl group, you've got a boy group, and then you've kind of got me. It's period three, and Jessica has been called to Mrs Ballard's office. Now, this is a big thing for someone, a big opportunity for someone, and she is really organised. And she's a right character, but she's got a bit of work to do in terms of the way she works with other people. She is a little bit different. She's a little bit quirky. When I first started at Willows, Jessica would have been in year eight, but actually she seemed like she was in her late 30s then. She works her socks off every single lesson. She never had a referral for anything. However, it's easy for pupils like that to start developing a reputation from some others um, that actually makes them unpopular. It is you, thank you. Come on in, Miss Bashful, come and have a seat. Yeah. It's Hello. only me, Miss Bubbins. You have a very unusual personality. It's mm. a quirky personality. <laughs> I love that because I've got a quirky personality too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you've been a perfect student. <laughs> But I guess I'll put my cards on the table. What we think is that you've got natural leadership qualities. Oh, well, thank you. So we, we want you to consider becoming the overall editor of the, the newspaper for, mm -hmm. for Willows. Basically, we need somebody who's going to put their heart and soul to it and okay. obviously a really good writer like you are. Thank you. So do we have ourselves a deal? Yep. Congratulations, young lady, editor of our new newspaper, The Aviator. <laughs> I think that Jessica can achieve anything. It's just adapting parts of her personality so that she can survive in the real world. I think if I tell myself that it's for a good cause, then it makes it a lot easier to deal with. But I find myself at those moments sometimes where I'm like, existential crisis hits you and you're just like, this is my life. I'm going to leave school and then I'm just going to be in the big old world and it's going to be like, oh no. <laughs> OK, so how does Jenny's mood change and know. why? It's after lunch, and Leah should be in her English class. <laughs> On-call teacher Mr Roberts has been told some Year 11s are missing from lessons. <laughs> I think when pupils true and it's the most frustrating thing. I actually think it's the worst waste of education that child can do, to be honest. <laughs> These girls are going to be finishing this school in a few months' time, so they have to learn that silly behaviour won't be tolerated. I don't think he could see us, to be honest. I don't think he could. Morning. How was uh, Friday? Didn't even get into a quarter to three. Quarter to three? Yeah. What time you acted your age? <laughs> quarter to three? Bloody hell. It's 7.30am. Mr Hennessy is the first teacher to arrive for the day. People know me. I, I don't think they'd say I'm a patient of a saint. I, I think I am patient, you've got to be. It's the day after Leah truanted, and she hasn't turned up for her first class. As part of the school's approach, Mr Hennessy regularly calls Leah to make sure she's coming in. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice message system. I won't answer the phone. I'll leave a ring. Hello? Hello? And then as soon as it stops ringing, I'll quickly text him. 
so I don't have to listen to his voice. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one. Morning. <sighs> Courtney, 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 Courtney. Were you in school all day yesterday? No. As a referral says you went true into National Five. I, I go mad, absolutely mad. I got told there was three students involved, right? But you're saying you weren't involved. Can you turn that off or answer it? I'm just, I'm just picking up the crap, picking up the pieces. Who is ringing you? No, mind, it was me. I was going to say, you've got to see Mr Hannessy with me. You went through it in lesson six yesterday. See it. I, I don't know where I'm coming or going with you two at the moment. Do you know the easiest thing for me to do is go, tell you what, you're in your 11, balls to him. But you are so close to actually making it, but you threw up one lesson, it just snowballs. Well, you're definitely in isolation. So why ain't she there? I'll, I'll, that's what it definitely. Ah, oh, me and Courtney. Well, you threw it, didn't you, yesterday? Or not? You've got two routes. You can either say you're rebelling, you don't want to do it, I'll just leave you alone. Or you can take the attitude of, well, actually, you've got six months left. We've got a chance to change you around. <laughs> We're well, true international fire. But teenagers, they think they've got all the time in the world, so. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that next month. And before we know it, we're in May, June, and exams are on the corner. Were you a lesser five or not? No. Thank you for clearing that up. Isolation. So, what's the probability? Zero. Thank you. So, you could say that zero out of ten. Six hundred migraine pain. So, eight is going to be. Does that make sense? They are roll again. I got five. Okay, last question. What's the problem with a pink marble? Does anybody have a counter? Right. On the front page of your sheet, that's the sort of picture you're going to get in your exam, okay? It's period three, and Jessica is in her geography class. Did you write these? Why? Because you spelled. Is there a mistake? Because you spelled the facts. I knew I had. I knew I had. <laughs> Be kind to me. People are going to be affected, affected. My favourite teacher is Mr Whitaker. We just kind of clicked. Ah, oh, you're wearing that again. I know. <laughs> I have the three science teachers. I have Mr Luca, and I like Mr Luca. So it's not Mr Aaron, is it? <laughs> Mr Price, and I like Mr Price. No, me too. Just joking. <laughs> Mr. Hancock, I like Mr. Hancock. All my teachers I like. Do you ever watch America's Next Top Model? Nah. You should. Jessica's always preferred the company of adults, and pupils like that seek the company of adults because they prefer that and feel more comfortable there rather than round with their peers. But actually, you've got to learn social skills as, as well. Yeah, I fine. feel like Alan Sugar. Yeah. You're fired. <laughs> There's three weeks until the launch of the new school paper. Do you remind me of Alan Sugar, but Mr Hennessy? Yeah. It's the end of the day, and Jessica and two deputy editors are holding interviews for prospective staff. I don't think anyone should run a newspaper who kind of, like, spread, like... Hate. <laughs> yeah. Like, negative people. Mm. Just, like, no. Yeah. No positive thinking. They can't yeah. be reserved, really. Yeah. No. They need to be they optimistic. Be... Yeah. They, they've got to be really, really determined. Mm. Yeah. Everyone. It definitely needs to be, like, inclusive and yeah. to be non-judgmental. You want everyone yeah. to be included. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Which section of people are you interested in? Which ideas do you have for the article that would appeal to the teenagers? Harry! You want to go in? No, no Hiya! Hi. Hi! Hi, what year are you in? Seven or two. OK. I don't talk too much, but if I ever do talk, it does... It just sounds strange, I suppose. I just... I don't know. I don't know. So... OK, what do you think would interest the teenagers in school? Things like, um, gossip. <laughs> really like newspapers and I like writing sometimes. Not all the time, though. And are you prepared to attend every Wednesday after school? Yes. OK. 
That's fine. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So which section in the newspaper are you interested in the most? I'm a little bit nosy and I like finding out what it. Would you be prepared to attend every Wednesday after school? Yes. Good. Okay, good. It's just exciting, you know. Okay. Something new. So you're like innovative? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that word, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to work on the school newspaper? Because um I couldn't do it. Okay. Sometimes giving somebody a job title stops them from having to go in as themselves and I think gives them a confidence. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Give me a high five. Excellent. Sad. That will help. I don't want you to glue to the person that is your bestie in this room. I want you to attach yourself with somebody in this room and find out five things about each other. Of your it's character. period two, and Leah is in her favourite class, performing arts. Go! I like to do in drama and that. It's not just something which I enjoy, it's something where I live. When I clap, become your character. Off you go! Leah needs five GCSEs to pursue her dream of studying drama at college. OK, and freeze. freeze. You're not yourself. You're a different person when you're acting. So that's what I like. Did anybody feel like they learned something additional about their own character whilst doing that? Life is like an act. You only act yourself a little bit. Sometimes you put a bit of a front up. Like an act? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't know, because I don't like me. Right, you could be low capulet. No, Ed could be low I think most girls deal with the same issues, actually, as they're developing with their confidence, and particularly girls that actually got very low self-esteem. They're just girls that actually are finding their own identity and growing up to be young women, and I think that's tough for most girls, is the truth. Uh, hi, I'm Jess. I'm the, uh, I'm the editor of the new school newspaper, The Aviator, and uh, this strange box, which is a mystery, will become clear in a minute. Um, I have made it my duty to find out what we need to change in this school. I'm going to be in the canteen with this box, and this is a comment box, so you can write your views on and what you to change on this, in the school. And don't worry, I will make it my duty to make sure that everyone's voice gets heard. <laughs> the thing about, like, personal image is, like, something that I've never quite understood. Like, I've never understood how people got to that point where they were, like, really popular or where they were really liked. Because I just don't see myself becoming that, so I was just like, how do they do that? Hello. I suppose it's the people you hang out with, but how did they get popular in the first place? <laughs> Is this great circle of life I don't understand. So, who are you and what are we doing? I'm Jess. So, what, what, what is that? It's for the, uh, the newspaper. Change the thug life. Free sweets on Friday and close the school. And a Monday. What would you like to change about Willows? Cute. What is on there? A games day with Xbox. I'm saying, uh, Mr. Whitkin deserves pay rise. Yeah, we'll go 60 40. 60 Yeah. <laughs> that you have been writing already, revise them, go over them, memorise them, OK? It's halfway through term, and the Year 11s are preparing for their upcoming English mock exam. It's really important that you go into this thinking you're going to do well, you're going to try your best. OK, open your books, we're going to carry on practising with this. So, now looking at question two. So... How are you feeling about your exams? Uh, I'm just, like, I'm trying to avoid them. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, not think about them and that. I really don't want to do them, like... How 
have to start off answering this question in the exam. All right? You're just sitting there in your own little world. Like, you overthink then about, like, all the stuff what I've got to catch up on, and, uh, and I just think, oh, my God. And then I just think I want to quit it all now. We need to be quick. Because otherwise they'll see us working out. Otherwise they'll see us working out. It's the end of lunch. Leah and Courtney's next lesson starts in five minutes. You all right? Yeah, you know. Oh, my God! When you have finished recording, you may hang up. With Leah's behaviour showing no sign of improvement, Mr Hennessy calls her mum. Hi, it's Mr Hennessy from Willows. How are you? The reason I'm ringing, uh, I'm very, very concerned about Leah at the moment. I'm concerned that she's starting to unravel. She's uh, starting to go AWOL. So any particular reason, anything going on that you know of? What did you leave Year 11 with? Me? <sighs> uh, two GCSEs. That was about it. I can remember my GCSE results day. The rest of the boys were celebrating. I remember being in the kitchen with my mother. In tears, great big lad in tears with my mother. Oh, yeah, she's a very bright girl. That's, that's why I'm trying to keep on top of her. But I was lucky in that straight away she was on the phone to contacts at local colleges and went on from there. All right, thank you. ta -ra. From the moment they come to school, the moment they leave, that's a massive responsibility because that will keep you awake, thinking, oh, my God, like me, they're going to leave with an E or a fail or wherever, and there are no excuses, no hiding places, it's you. Do you have any phobias? I'm not a big fan of anything that scuttles. No, cockroaches. I'm afraid uh, of cider and I'm afraid of rum. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> your biggest fear is always to do with your family, isn't it? You know what I mean? Something up to your yeah. family, your kids and stuff. It's Wednesday morning. Jessica's undercover reporter, Harry, is on the prowl for school gossip. See that? Snakes. Anybody else? Snakes. Not a fan of snakes. That is one of my biggest fears. Beetroot. Oh, I'm a little bit scared of beetroot. <laughs> Come in. It's period three. We need to go and see Mr Hennessy, Leah. And Leah is only just arriving for the day. No, sit down. Get him out of that box and sit down. After yesterday's truanting, she's due to spend the morning in the isolation unit. Sir, am I in inclusion? Where were you yesterday afternoon? Well, what's it called? Uh, yeah, because one of the... I'm teaching right now, Leah, or trying to. No. No, no. Tough love, probably the hardest aspect of the job. But she needs to follow the rules, otherwise we've got no hope. The first thing you got to say is you want to speak to the manager. OK. So say that you're Benji from Willows High School, and then ask if they'd be kind enough to donate a £5 gift voucher. It's a few days until the launch of the school newspaper. You know, if they don't want to, do I have to persuade them? 
Jessica has asked Year 8 student Benji to help round up prizes for a raffle. And saying thank you is extremely important. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. I'm the one who's doing it now. Um, you know if I get stuck, should I say you're my manager? It sounds really professional. <laughs> Colleague. My assistant. No. Oh. <sighs> Hello, I am Benji um, from Willows High School. Please, could I speak to your manager? Mm -hmm. um, I'm currently working on a school newspaper and we are very excited about it. And we were wondering, would you be kind enough to donate a £5 gift voucher? Uh, yeah. That'd be wonderful. Um, if you would like to speak to my associate. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm Benji's associate, as he said. Usually, I'm more of a you know individual person, but you know working with a team is a good experience. But as long as everyone pulls their weight. Hello, could I speak to your manager, please? We were wondering, could you would you be kind enough to donate a five pound gift voucher as a prize for the competition? Benji's a clever kid, and he was very confident. And I was like, wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I kind of learned from Benji how to do it, so it was a good feeling. I was like, wow, Benji taught me something. I feel like, ooh, I feel up here professional. Right. On Monday, you have got your mock exam, OK? Now, this is really, really important. You have to see this as the proper exam. Think of it as It's one week exam. until the Year 11s sit their GCSE English mock. With poor attendance still an issue, Mrs Ballard has called the worst offenders to the hall. This is in here now. All oh, this shit. Oh. Come on in. You are here today because it is deadly serious. If I had anybody that even had less than half as bad timekeeping or attendance as you, I'd be firing them. You will be dumped out of a college at the speed of light if you've got poor attendance and poor timekeeping. If you're late for work, you will get the boot. You, Leah, I think in your house, you're like I've got about the third worst attendance record for school. In fact, in Strenacy, he got to get up in the morning and get ready. he got three little kids. What's he doing? He's on the phone, phoning you, and you don't like the sound of his voice, so you hang up. Come on! There ain't another school in Wales where the staff would be phoning you guys up to get you here. There is a different side of, to this, right? And this is important. If you're late ten times in a row, your parents will get a fixed penalty. They're £60 each. If that's not paid in 28 days, the parents will be taken to court. I worked in a school in Southampton where a parent actually ended up going to prison for non-payment of these fines. Right? This sort of makes it even more important now to come to school on time and every day because it's not just going to affect your progress, it's going to have a knock-on effect to your family, isn't it? Get here on time. Got it? We walk a fine line with Leah, making sure that she does actually finish school. I believe that if we turned into disciplinarians with her, she would stop attending altogether. Her brother left because of his behaviour. Her sister didn't achieve her potential at Willows. Hello. If Leah can get to the finish line, she'll be the highest achiever at school of anybody in her family. My mum always makes me go to school all the time. She says I'll turn out like my older brother. I got scared by that. I feel so emotional. She feels pure depressed. We do have a small percentage of kids that test us day in, day out, and they're very needy. They're a challenge, but if you keep pushing it and pushing it, something might click. I hope Leah realises that it's not too late. So, do you still need a phone call in the morning? 
Well, you still need a well, phone. you said that you asked me now. Well, you know, it's, it's like an argument with a wife type thing, you know? Settle down after 48 hours and emotions are back down. But I'm not going to give up. So do you still need a phone call in there? I think the truth is at the moment that everybody believes in Leah apart from Leah. The kids that don't believe in themselves think that they will just fail. And because they think that they will fail, they give up trying. Are you crying? Oh my god, Lee, what the fuck? Oh, my God. <gasps> I don't even know why I'm crying, like... <sighs> Is this school? Like, I can't stand it. <gasps> Gets you pure depressed. <sighs> Just been feeling like I want to cry all week. Are you scared about failing? Yeah, I'm very scared. I wake up every day and I just think, I don't know if I want to stay in school or not. Because myself, I don't reckon that I'm good. I need to help a lot with, like, everything in school. But then, I don't like asking for help. I really, I don't know, I just really don't like asking for help. It's five o'clock. Mr Hennessy has received a text from Leah. Well, I saw her in the canteen. I said, oh, do, you want me to, do you want me to keep ringing you? And then she sends me that text message. Sends it to you. Give me your phone. School phone. All oh, right. The school gets Say to her then, innit? Oh. Hello? Leah, speak to me. I just needed to ring you because that text got me worried where you're just starting to implode. You've come so far, you just need to start believing in yourself. Yeah? Just don't start losing it now. Right. right, enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll speak to you in the morning. Cheer up, for God's sake. Ta-da! You talk to him nice. Yeah. Oh. Most of the time. She's quite a closed book with me. But then, kind of this fence comes down. She's talking, she's communicating. She started to think and move forward, which I suppose some people would describe as maturing. Well, the thing is, Jude, do you, th do you think, do you think yeah. Leah and Courtney yeah. think they're lucky or they hate me? I bet they hate you. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So they don't realise how lucky they are, do they? Right, I'll see you in the morning, girls. See ya, It's Monday morning. It's like a really bad outtake from Reservoir Dogs walking towards yeah. us. <laughs> the day of Leah's English mock exam. Is she coming? Is she coming or not? Done the isolation, done the phone calls, we've had the tears, we've had the shouting match. But you've got to selectively think, well, enough's enough. They've got to take take on board what you've said now and let them fly. 
or crash. Come on, my lovelies. You know, it's always lovely to see you, but I'd like to see you a little bit earlier. Mr. Hennessy, because he knows that I've got the potential of doing something, and he thinks if he don't try and help me, I won't help myself then. Right, if you can fill up the gaps, that would be lush. Right. He just keeps saying, like, you're clearer than that. You could get anything. So then I thought, oh. I might be able to. Calm down, Gerald, sit there, just sit down. So I thought, what's the point in doing so many years in school and then not getting anything out of here? So I thought, right, you've got to change now and start growing up and that. All ready? OK, you can begin. It's a big day for Jessica. Do you want to sit in the boss's chair? And I'll sit here. <laughs> OK, so how do you actually feel when you're approaching some of the people you, you would never usually approach? Nervous. Mrs Bubbins has asked Jessica to launch the newspaper at lunchtime in front of the whole school. Great. Like, how, how do you do that without them laughing at you? But when has anyone laughed at you? Well, no, n never happened, but it's just like... Yeah, so, right, so it's never happened. It's happening in your head, in your imagination. Mm -hmm. And if you actually speak to some kids, not that you're going to believe this, they're a bit scared of talking to you because they think that you're too smart for them. Oh, they do. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't thought like too smart for them, but I think not cool enough for them. That's what I think. That's why I think people don't talk to me. I don't think it's that. A lot of people in this school actually admire you. Mm. Well, okay. Honestly, go in with a confident <laughs> stride in your step. Mm -hmm. I really wonder what kind of people you've been talking to. It's for the newspaper. <laughs> Do you actually really? Some of them I don't go up to them because I find them maybe a bit intimidating or that they're not quite, you know, I'm kind of here, they're kind of here. There's no two ways about it. You've got to get out there and do it. But what if I don't want to? What if I really don't want to? Do you think people would be brave enough to, like, say to their friends, I'm just going to go and get a newspaper? No. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you've got a lot of self-doubt. The chimes of doom. <laughs> no, it's not that... Oh, Jessica. Confidence. Hi, Ryan. Do you want a copy? Yeah, sure. Go on, then. Here you go, Ryan. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so fresh off the press. OK. Here you go. I'm scared. But feigning confidence is the best way of gaining confidence. Thanks. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, there we go. Like good for you. Go grab for that. Flying off the shelves. I've never felt pride like it. Oh, really? It's going to be really difficult to say goodbye. But actually, she's taken some really big steps. She's probably just about ready to take on the world and to face some new challenges. Here you are. Last coffee. Hey! They're all gone! They're gone. They're sold out for the day. Our undercover reporter also managed to discover that Mr Whitaker has a strange fear of beetroot and that Mr Edwards isn't a fan of snakes. <laughs> My favourite word coming up. We think of the idiosyncrasies of that character. OK, off you go, thinking about your character. <laughs> Rumour had it, you were in school on time this morning. And freeze. 
I'm starting to be organised now, trying to get it on time. It's hard, but then, like, if I pass, oh, I feel like, oh, my God, I just achieved something for once. <laughs> What's it called? I don't know, what's it called? I want, <laughs> right, a Christmas picture to stick on Mr Hennessy's card. Right, then. What's that? <laughs> I think the kids reluctantly like him. I think that the kids actually are wise enough to see how hard he works. Thank you for helping me out this year. He'll be lucky to go one out with me. I'm going to give him one, but he'll be lucky and he's having one. You can be as Mr Grumpy and as pushy as you like, but the kids know you care, and I think that's much more important to our kids than anything else. Something came through in the post this morning. Yeah, I've just seen Special her. Special delivery. Mm. <laughs> She's a cheeky girl. Oh, well, well, well. She was here till quite late last night putting that together, so, you know, you are there in her head and in her heart. Do you think you've got quite a sensitive side? Yeah, I, I, yes. I, I don't think it always comes across. Yeah, I, I'm a sensitive soul, really. The, the exterior doesn't really show the inside. So I'd like to call Jessica up to receive her award. Thank you very much. <laughs> My God. Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>